Welcome to Gabriela Geprod, and today's project is inspired by the game Valorant, more specifically Sage's Wall. This under the surface, on its core, it's essentially a world building system. And in a game design perspective, it's used as a mechanic to block the enemy or to help an ally. However, we are also here for the visual aspect of this effect. Basically, we need to decompose how the wall is built by a mage. Or, wait, should I say a sage? Anyway, let's jump right into it and let's see the steps I took to recreate Sage's wall. But first, as usual, just wanna say if you wanna get your hands on this project, this is all available on my Patreon page. You help me make these videos and you can study the project up close. Links in the description. So, let's have a quick breakdown. This is composed of essentially four parts. The first part is the visual mark on the ground that represents where the wall is going to be. And this is composed of a 3D object with a custom material, a custom shader and a few debris floating. The second part is the wall rising and here we see these very faded large particles on the ground and then we see this wave forming all around the wall and following the rise up of the wall. And besides that, there's a few particles of debris. The third part starts once the wall is up and it's made of four sculpted cubes with a very nice ice material that has some cracks and a scrolling texture inside. And as time progress or as damage is taken, the wall starts breaking up and the cracks shine brighter and brighter. The fourth and last part is when one of the cubes breaks up. Here we get an explosion with debris, particles, smoke and other textures. So yeah, a lot of things are going on in Sage's wall. So I decided to start with the marker on the ground that will represent where the wall will rise. So I went to Blender and created this cube with no bottom or top faces. And I corrected the UVs to be like this and saved all of it to Unity. In Unity, I attached it to an empty game object and created the Sage Wall script. And in the script, I start by disabling the wall marker and only enable it when I press C, which is what I use in Valorant to place the wall. So if I press C, I also call a function that keeps updating the position of the wall marker. And it's basically a ray that grows from the center of the camera to where I'm aiming. And within a certain range, if it hits something, it means it's in range, which means I can save the hit position and the rotation. And if it's in range, then I pass the hit position and the rotation to the marker and turn it on. And that's how I made the wall marker follow to where we are aiming. For the next part, the visual aspect of the wall marker, I needed a custom shader where I start with a noise texture that is scrolling up and then I need a mask, so I used gradient from the UV node to get this result. Once I created the material out of the shader, I get this result. But after a few tweaks, I end up with this. Which looks much better and much more polished. One other thing that this shader contains is a tall parameter. How tall is this effect going to be? And it is controlling some power and multiply nodes. And it's also useful to animate when the wall marker is placed for the first time on the ground. The next part is the wall rising. So first I need the wall and for the wall I need cubes. So I went back to Blender and sculpted this cube right here. Nothing special. If this was for a game, I would need to create a low poly version of this and bake the normals and etc. But I created this cube with these UV maps and I saved it to Unity. So now that I have the cube, I need to create the system for building the wall. So in the same script, I say that if I press the fire button and it's in range and the wall is not building, I call a function called build wall that essentially disables the wall marker on the ground, creates a new empty game object, sets the new object to the destination, which is to where we are aiming, and then it spawns a certain amount of cubes which are going to be offset by a wall cube distance, multiplied by the iterator. And then I parent the cubes to the wall. 
Finally, I set the rotation of the wall to be equal to this rotation and move the wall back so it's centered to where we are aiming. And now every time I press the fire button, I spawn three cubes or more if I want. But as you can see, they don't get destroyed and they don't have any material as well. But that was a nice step. So the next part is creating the material for the wall. The ice material. This material right here. And it's a quite complex shader. But there's a few things that the shader must have. As you can see, it's a little bit big. But for example, I started with the albedo and with the normal maps. Right? And then I created a Fresnel for the emission. I inverted the Fresnel so it gets brighter on the center. And to the Fresnel, I added the cracks. Which is this part right here. And then we have the metallic and the glossiness options, which are super easy. And up here, we have the trail scrolling. I have done plenty of tutorials on how to create this scrolling trail. And lastly, I add a glowing texture on top of this. I could have used the RGB technique where I join all of the textures in one, but this is working fine. And at the time I also created this rise wall slider, but I didn't use it in the end. And at this point I had the wall mark on the ground, I was able to create the wall, via script, and I made the crazy ice material. My next step was to destroy the wall. So basically, as soon as I finish building the wall, I call a coroutine, name it destroy wall, that after a certain amount of time, will destroy the wall. In this case, it's only 3 seconds, but I can set it to as much time as I want. Cool. Now, one thing that is missing when I spawn the wall is the rising animation. So I create this animation right here for the cubes. Since the pivot is on the center and on the ground, I only add to animate the scale of this object and a few more parameters of the ice material. And it's one step down. For the next part, I add to animate the cracks amount via script. Basically control a parameter of the shader via script. The way I did it was by creating a, a list of the cube materials and then, according to the wall duration, I'm going to start increasing the cracks amount and pass that value to each material of each cube. For this to work, the reference of the variable that I'm trying to control must be named so I can access it via code. Right, and that's, that's pretty cool because now every time we spawn the wall, we see the cracks getting brighter and brighter until it explodes. But yeah, we don't have any explosion as it is now. So that was my next step to create the wall explosion. So I made this visual effect right here. Where we have a few debris and then a few particles and then this star texture as well, which is a little bit tilted. So we add a little bit of randomness to each cube and the beam and the circle and this hand painted impact. With this VFX done, I went back to the Sage Wall script and for each child of the wall, I instantiated an explosion and destroyed it after 3 seconds. And at this point, this is what I got. So it was looking really nice and it's getting really closer to the original Sage's Wall effect. So at this point, I was making a few improvements, like for example, adding a few debris to the wall marker and animating the material of the wall marker as well. So every time I press C, I get this nice animation and this nice little debris going on. And it adds a nice touch, a really nice touch. The next improvement was in the cubes. I created a few debris as well, added a few particles and these beams that follow the cube rising animation. And finally a few debris as well. So yeah, it's starting to get a little bit more polished. And I was really pleased at this point with what I had. One of the final steps was to create the effect that follows the wall when it's rising all around. For that part I went back to Blender and created this mesh with these specific UVs. 
and for this mesh I needed a new shader that will basically scroll this gradient, this texture right here but first I mixed in a Voronoi node to add a nice touch but basically the idea is to animate the main texture offset so I can create this kind of effect and once I apply this to the mesh that I just created I get this nice effect that I can use in an animation and I can even animate some of the shader parameters, material parameters and give it this nice bright look at the beginning and then it fades out. I then made a few more simple adjustments and I end up with this. As always, this entire project is available on my Patreon page or my site gabrielaguerprod.com. If you would like to see anything made in Unity, let me know in the comments, please. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. All of this is made possible thanks to my patrons. Your support truly means a lot. And as usual, a special shoutout goes to the top tier patrons, which are 3D Fix, Donny Trona, Goblin Plague, Hero Syndrome The Game, Imerai SPC, Josh McCormick, Kojo Apuni, Lars Martin, Liu Chang Chen, Pandora Toolbox, Regan Neidu, TK, Toodless Webt, Victor Nathan, and VR Pal, and Yong Shin. Thank you all for your support, you guys are amazing. So that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I really hope to see you in the next one.